Day two. I'm not a crook. Welcome back everyone to Beach Woody because kids say the darndest thing. Today is day two. Day two of our wine chip best flavor tournament. I don't remember what the graphic was. I don't think I made it. Did I make it? But what we've done is uh, since wine chips never reached out to send me chips so that I could review them on the regular, I've decided to purchase their Father's Day sampler set and uh, try them all and determine which flavor is the best flavor for you at home because we have 10 flavors. We've eliminated two already uh, from our preliminary round on Monday. You can find that video in the upper right hand corner if you haven't seen it yet. Spoilers, but we eliminated the Serrano cheddar and the blue cheese from the running. So today we're not just running off the flavor of the chips. We are doing the recommended pairings as per the package. You see, the nice thing about these wine chip packages is that they include a suggested pairing for each chip. And we're gonna follow the directions and in a single elimination style tournament, we'll determine the best, 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 best one chip flavor out of the 10 that I purchased myself. <sighs> so let's get to the first matchup. We have the number one seed Smoked Gouda versus the number eight seed Asiago. What? And the Smoked Gouda says to pair with cabs and red wines. So we will be having a 2015 Castoro Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon from the Whale Rock Vineyard to pair with our Smoked Gouda. And uh, the Asiago says Pinot Grigio, Zinfandel, Fruity White and Red Wines. So we are trying the Murphy Good 2014 Zinfandel, which I believe they nicknamed something Liar's Dice. Let's get ready to rumble. If you're unfamiliar with how to do a wine and food pairing, you want to take a sip of your wine first to cleanse your palates, try a bite of your food, and then another sip. Here we go. That's not bad. I've already done this pairing before in the first review that I did. I'm gonna be really disappointed if Smoke Gouda makes it all the way to the end because I already reviewed Smoked Gouda. I knew that it was a decent flavor. I just said it wasn't worth the price um, unless maybe you roll enroll in their club. So have I bought this entire sampler set for no good reason? Maybe, but I'm gonna be really upset if it turns out to be true. Next up, we got the number eight seed Asiago with the Zinfandel. If you remember from Monday's episode, I didn't like how it smelled like stinky feet. And I thought that um, it was a little lackluster and didn't deserve to, to be on the board with the rest of the big boys. Cheers. Ooh, that is a hard choice. The Asiago with its pairing is quite good. They're actually very similar in their wine pairings. They both kind of, well, they're both cheeses and they both accent parts of the red wine that you wouldn't normally uh, taste. The Asiago accenting some smoky notes in the Zinfandel that I didn't notice upon first sip and the smoked Gouda accenting more of the um, fruity notes, which are in a 2015 wine kind of hard to find. So. This was a hard choice. I'm gonna send Smoke Gouda on. Goodbye, Asiago. Our next pairing will be the number four seed Thai Lemongrass versus the number five seed Black Jalapeno Lava. Black Lava Jalapeno. Um, I really liked the Thai Lemongrass and it was, it tasted like an Indian style curry, butter chicken. Um, and both of these say to pair with Gewurztraminer. Uh, the Thai lemongrass says Gewurz, Torontes, or aromatic white wines. The Black Lava Jalapeno says Champagne, Riesling, Pinot Gris, Gewurz, or Pinot Noir. I assume they both mean uh, this one in particular. They mean a sweeter one, sweeter one. But what I have today is 2017 Cuvée Frederica from Claiborne in Churchill. 
um, which is a blend of Gortz and Riesling and it's dry. So gotta, you gotta put sweet on it or else I'm gonna go dry because that's who I am. It smells like Gortz on the nose with a hint of Riesling. All right, we're gonna start with the Thai lemongrass. Cheers. Oh, there's a reason why you go Riesling or Gortz with your Thai food. It complements the spiciness, especially if there's any residual sugar, which this does not have. And then it really accents, uh, gourds in particular, accents the the melody of, of spices that they use. Particularly the cinnamon is really coming out and uh, the Thai lemongrass that is in fact in this, in this starts to shine uh, on this white wine which is nice. Pairing wise, I would give this a four out of five. It's transformative. It's quite good. Let's try the black lava jalapeno. Now, I said last episode, jalapeno chips are my favorite. I've never had them with uh, a Riesling or a Gortz, but let's see how it goes. Wow, okay. That was really good, guys. I'm gonna be honest, I hate that these two got paired up against each other because Ooh, uh, there's that heat again. That pa both pairings are fantastic. I would put this at a four or 4.5. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put this at a 4.5 because the, the jalapeno, I don't know what black lava jalapeno is, but it the jalapeno flavor really starts to get accented on this wine. And then uh, it brings out like a smoky quality to it. it, it it's amazing. I, I would say, gotta try both of these pairings. Try the Gortz with either. Uh, I'm really sad because I did really enjoy this, um, but buy Thai lemongrass. Black Lava Jalapeno is moving on. What an upset. All right, our third matchup today is number two seed, the Hamon. Hamon Iberico de Blota. Don't speak Spanish. And number seven seed is the sweet coconut curry. Uh, the pairing for the Hamon is Pinot Noir, but all of the pairings include Sherry, Rioja, Pinot Noir, slash right, light red wines, Alberino, Riesling, and dry white wine. So you can pair it with just about anything. And then for the sweet coconut curry, you can pair it with Alberino, Viognier, or an aromatic white. So that's going to go back to the Gwartz that we were the Gortz Riesling pairing that we were drinking because it is an aromatic white. So starting with the Pinot with the Hamon. Wow, uh, this is a 2016 Ansel Vineyards um, Pinot Noir. Blueberry on the nose. Wow, that, that's lovely. I haven't, I haven't tried this yet. Ooh, 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 ooh yes. Okay, that's awesome. That's that's a four, four point five on our one to five pairing scale. It transforms the hormone. It brings out uh, the smoky roasted flavors of a cured meat. You kind of get a little coal, uh, beach coals uh, or uh, uh, charcoal, uh, which is interesting. I don't know which which brought that to the table or what combination of the wine and this brought it to the table. That is fantastic. That is a fun pairing. But here to try is the number seven seed. Sweet coconut curry, and we're having this with an aromatic white wine. Let's give it a shot. Ooh, um, just like with the Thai lemongrass, it immediately made those the curry notes just pop. The the curry spices, um, the coconut flavoring as well. Uh, I would also, I would give that at least a four on my one to five pairing wine pairing scale. It, it definitely brightened what the chip didn't have on its own. But unfortunately, I think the, the Hamon does much better than the sweet coconut curry. So I'm gonna toss it. And our final pairing for today is the number three seed Manchego versus the number six seed Hawaiian red sea salt. The Manchego says to pair with rosé and bubbly, and the Hawaiian Red Sea Salt says shard, bubbly, and fruity white wines. So we have this sparkling wine from Opolo Vineyard. Uh, slightly concerned with how oxidized it looks, but we'll see how we'll see how it fares. 
you know that a classic sparkling wine champagne pairing uh, is potato chips, salty potato chips. So I'm curious how the Manchego is going to improve on that. Cheers. Manchego doesn't bring much to the table there. Um, certainly this, this sparkling, it's not the best, uh, but it, you can taste some of the, the sweeter Chardonnay notes in there. It's kind of, it's almost, it's reminiscent of a Martinelli's, but pairing wise, the, the Manchego doesn't really offer anything. It doesn't, doesn't transform. It's not a bad pairing by any means, but it's uh, my standard three. So let's see if there's another upset with the Hawaiian red sea salt. Cheers. Um, that's a three as well. Honestly, maybe even a 2.5 uh, without something stronger like the Manchego, the sea salt kind of just fades into the background on this. So yeah, Manchego moves on. Unfortunately, no upset here. Uh, Goodbye, Hawaiian sea salts. And there you have it. That is our four winners that are going on to the semifinals and the final round on Friday. Tune in. Tune in. Um, we have Smoked Gouda, Black Lava Jalapeno, Homon, and Manchego. Moving on to the next round, which you can catch here on my YouTube channel on Friday by going to youtube.com slash rewind show. Hit the subscribe button while you're there. Hit the bell icon so that you get notified when this episode comes out. And leave me a like, comment, let me know if you're gonna try your own elimination style pairing because I mean, why wouldn't you? You can also find this over on IGTV, which is Instagram uh, by going to at rewind show. And as always, you find me on Twitter by going to at be schwitty. This has been Rewind. My name is B. Schwitty, and I will catch you next time.